This is Cyberpunk at ultra settings, running buttery smooth above 60 FPS, and this is Fortnite pushing over 300 frames. And for the longest time, you needed a dedicated graphics card for either of these. But this is actually running entirely on integrated graphics, on a tablet. And I'm not talking about 1080p. This is 1600p. That's twice as many pixels as 1080p and it's still running perfectly. But for all of this to even be possible, these integrated graphics have to be paired with an insanely powerful CPU. Because as you probably know, integrated graphics are literally integrated into the same chip as the CPU. And that processor is AMD's Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. Ignoring the terrible name though, this chip is unbelievably fast. With 16 cores, 32 threads, and a boost clock of 5.1 gigahertz, it actually comes within 1% of the Ryzen 9 9900X in multi-core workloads, within 0.2% of the 7950X 3D in single core, and it does all of this while pulling less than half the power. Which you could imagine is pretty important on a portable device like the ROG Flow Z13 that ASUS very kindly sent over for review. Full disclaimer, ASUS did not pay me for this video and they will not be seeing this video before it is uploaded. So any of my thoughts in this video are my own, but keep in mind that my opinions may be skewed slightly simply because I received this product for free. Regardless, it doesn't change the fact that this CPU's integrated graphics, the Radeon 8060S, is over 20 times faster than the integrated GPU of the 9900X, and it's currently the fastest integrated GPU money can buy. And again, this is all packed inside a tablet that's thinner than an AirPods case. Now to really show you just how insane this is, let's rewind to the first laptop I ever bought with integrated graphics. Inside this laptop is an Intel i5 1135G7. Back then, the Iris Xe graphics in this thing were the best that Intel had to offer at the time. But compared to what we have today, the difference is night and day. And the 8060S has some of the most insane features I've ever seen on any machine. But before we get to that, let's load up the exact same spot in Cyberpunk on both devices. Firstly, on the VivoBook with Iris Xe graphics, we unfortunately have to drop the resolution down to 720p and put every single setting on low. And as you'd expect from an average integrated GPU, it was so choppy and unplayable that I'd rather just not play the game at all and maybe go outside for once. But on the 8060S, I'm able to crank up the settings all the way up to 1600p ultra and with some upscaling, it's capable of maintaining over 60 FPS. Something that we have never seen from integrated graphics before. And all of this is in a form factor so small that every component is crammed behind the screen since there's no space under the keyboard like a regular gaming laptop. But that's just the start because in Rocket League, I was able to get over 400 FPS using the same high quality settings I normally use on my main PC. And again, if I try this on my i5 laptop at just 1080p, I'm not even able to get 50 FPS in free play. In something a little bit more demanding like Shadow of the Tomb Raider though, the Iris Xe drops down to 29 FPS using the lowest settings at 800 by 600 resolution. But because this is an older game from 2018, the 8060S has absolutely no issue with running this game at native 1600p at a very smooth 83 FPS. But this is where you'll notice something that's pretty insane. You'll see that as we're running this benchmark, the game is using over 8GB of VRAM. And this is where the feature that I teased at the start of the video comes in clutch. The thing that has been the biggest weakness for gaming laptops has always been the limited VRAM. If you thought that VRAM was already a big enough issue on desktop GPUs, well it's about twice as worse on laptops. Take the RTX 3060 for example. With 12GB of VRAM on the desktop model, you would want to have the same or a similar amount on a laptop because the laptop version is not that much slower. But the unfortunate reality is that the laptop version of the 3060 only comes with 6GB of VRAM which you could probably understand is super problematic as it's only 7.8% slower but has 50% less VRAM. But with integrated graphics like this, there is no set limit. Because your CPU and GPU are on the same chip, they share one larger pool of system memory. And if I want, I can go into the software and manually assign up to 75% of my RAM as dedicated VRAM. So on my 32 gig model, I can assign up to 24 gigabytes. And if you were to get the 64 or 128 gig version, the amount of VRAM you can have on this thing would be insane for AI and productivity workloads. Moving on to some newer games like the finals on epic settings with all the demanding lumen effects turned on, it still runs a very playable 76 FPS. 
and it continues to hold up in the newest, most punishing titles. Even Monster Hunter Wilds, a game infamous for being terribly difficult to run, is able to maintain 52 FPS at high settings. Now 52 FPS might not sound the best, and it definitely does not feel the best, but 52 FPS at this resolution is around 58 FPS at 1440p, and you can definitely use more aggressive upscaling to get that over 60. And as long as you don't mind dropping your settings from high to medium or doing a little bit of optimization, you can still get over 60 FPS in all your favorite games, like Black Myth Wukong. Another very difficult game to run, but the tablet still plays it at 67 FPS on medium settings. But you'll notice that all of those benchmarks were done with traditional lighting. The ultimate graphics test has always been ray tracing. But you'd have to be a psycho to even try ray tracing on integrated graphics, right? Well, the 8060S actually has dedicated ray tracing cores. To be fair, this isn't something new because we have seen RT cores in integrated graphics like the 890M and 780M for example, but never this many. The 8060S dwarfs both of them in this area, and in reality, it's more comparable to dedicated GeForce RTX GPUs. Of course, the cores in the 8060S are not as fast or efficient, but 40 cores is still not something to scoff at. And it isn't just for show. In Cyberpunk, with RT low at 1600p, we're able to get 56 FPS or 62 FPS at 1440p. However, using RT Ultra, just one setting below the highest preset in the game, the frame rate does take a big hit. But this is where the new technology comes in. Normally I don't really show off benchmarks using frame generation, but I just had to show you this because it allows this tablet to get almost 60 FPS at 1600p. And it's not just Cyberpunk, even in a brand new unoptimized game like Monster Hunter Wilds, with high ray tracing and frame gen, it still holds 72 FPS. But unfortunately it's not all perfect. Because of this thin form factor, the tablet can't fully utilize its processor. This causes it to underperform in CPU heavy games like Fortnite and even more noticeably in Marvel Rivals, where it struggles to hit high frame rates even on low settings. But despite that limitation, you can still get over 260 average FPS in Fortnite at 1600p and 76 FPS in Marvel Rivals at low settings. These are not bad numbers by any means, but since the CPU is significantly more powerful than the 7600X in my main PC, a fully powered version of this chip certainly would have been able to do over 300 FPS in Fortnite and 100 FPS in Marvel Rivals. Now at this point you may have realized that I haven't really talked about the price of these integrated graphics, and that's because it's a little bit complicated. As of right now, there is no official way of getting one of these Ryzen APUs by themselves, so if you wanted to get one for a regular PC build, you can't. You'd have to buy an entire laptop, mini PC, or handheld console, which are all very niche products. And for the same price, you can just buy a more powerful regular laptop or just a regular gaming PC. But that's missing the point. The point is that this is the end of integrated graphics being a limitation. So while you might not buy this specific tablet today, this will be the future for portable gaming machines just like it. And that is super exciting. Something else that's super exciting is this video about the Nintendo Switch 2's GPU. So watch this video next.